Oh, hello. You know, I, I didn't know it was supposed to be fair and milder. Looks to me like it's fixing to drizzle. I don't know, maybe it's artificial rain. Uh, Irresistible uh, dream of television. And, and, sir, how old were you when you invented uh, television, or the first television machine as we know it today, first television system? I was 14. Smile. You're on TV. Well, of course you're not, really. You're at home deciding if you'll watch and what you'll watch. Television was invented by Philo Farnsworth here in San Francisco in 1927. Its first image was a straight line projected from one end of this building to the other. The first person on TV was Philo's wife. In under a decade, television was a public resource. The medium was inherently ephemeral, comparable more to theater than film. Every program broadcast was performed live and would never be seen again after it was finished. If a program was rerun, it was redone completely. Every performance was slightly different. Tape for recording video wasn't invented until the 1950s. So there was no easy way to capture these images. Television's first decade was prehistoric. It matched the tens of millennia of human history that went unrecorded and forgotten. The story of the inception of the Earth's sun is a much longer one. Much like television, most of the early history of the sun also went unrecorded by humanity, but unlike television, the sun's behavior has been a lot more static. Predictably, in an easily measured cycle, a cluster of sunspots will flare up on its surface. Sunspots occur at all times, but they reach their apex every 11 years. Humanity began tracking them in 1755, and we've noticed that the apex of the solar cycle correlates with solar and geomagnetic storms and increased levels of UV radiation hitting the Earth. But today, I want to do a Northern Lights picture. Glad you could join me today. You know, they say that time really goes by when you're having fun, and here we find ourselves on our last show of this series. These cycles are rare for natural phenomena because unlike hurricanes, tectonic plates, or planets, they aren't given creative names by us. Instead, they receive a sterile number. We're on 25 now. On the fourth year of cycle 14, Philo Farnsworth was born in Beaver, Utah. In the last year of cycle 15, Farnsworth had drawn out a preliminary sketch for what would be television while still in high school. On the fourth year of cycle 16, Philo Farnsworth said, there you are, electronic television. By the beginning of the 17th solar cycle, the BBC had set up one of the world's first television studios at Alexandra Palace. By the apex of that same solar cycle, the January 1938 geomagnetic storm occurred. It knocked out communication around the world, and many saw phantom fires. Fire departments all over Europe and America were called to extinguish optical illusions brought under the sun's flare. RCA was still perfecting their all-electronic television in preparation for the New York World's Fair the next year. A new art and a new industry, which eventually will provide entertainment and information for millions. Their new station, W2XBS, would transmit from the top of the recently completed Empire State Building. With this collapse of communication, another strange thing happened. For the first time in history, a television lab at RCA was connected to Alexander Palace's broadcast. The signal had been reflected by a sunspot and bounced across the Atlantic to New York, and the RCA lab techs happened to record it. This geomagnetic storm also allowed us to view this, one of the only recordings of pre-war television we have. ghost-like, but perhaps the implication of this footage is more terrifying than ghosts. These are memories, once concrete broadcasts around the world reduced to fuzzy blobs. The equation is memory times decay. This is the product.
I knew if I didn't pull myself together soon, I'd fall apart for good.